Share buybacks or share repurchases have become an increasingly common option, particularly in corporate America. And to a large extent, big share repurchase programs have really replaced the dividend. There's a couple of key advantages to doing share buybacks versus using cash to just pay directly out to shareholders. Firstly, particularly in the US, it's simply more tax efficient to pay a dividend than do a share buyback. When a company makes money, they pay tax on their profits. And then when they distribute that to the shareholder as a cash dividend, the shareholder is then also taxed on that as kind of regular income. And that is not the case when a company goes through and does a share repurchase. There's no kind of double taxation effect. So that has been one big reason why share repurchases have become attractive for many management teams in big US public companies. And another reason is that when you do start paying a dividend, there is this kind of inbuilt expectation that that dividend will be a regular ongoing thing. And should the business ever run into tough times, it can be really painful for management teams to kind of turn off that dividend. Whereas if they're going through a share repurchase or share buyback program, there's a lot more flexibility to uh, lift the share repurchases up when times are good and pull the share repurchases down to preserve of capital when times aren't so good. And many investors and CEOs and management teams alike will often refer to share repurchases and share buyback programs as if they were a dividend. How many times have you heard a CEO say or write that, you know, in this quarter we returned XYZ number of dollars to shareholders through our repurchase program? And although that's an okay way to look at it, in this video I really want to make the argument that share buybacks are not really a dividend, rather I think it's much more useful to think about a share buyback actually as an acquisition, as if you were purchasing a brand new business unit or purchasing an entirely new company. I think that you should be thinking about share repurchases in basically the same way when weighing up whether those buybacks are a good decision or not. And if you stack up the buyback versus acquisition equation, there's actually a couple of really distinct kind of key advantages that buybacks offer. So that is the topic for today's video. If you do enjoy it, please hit like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new here. We're trying to make that push up to 40,000 subscribers, so it'd be cool when we can tick that milestone off. But for now, let's get straight into the rest of the video. Now, share buybacks, put very simply, are basically a company taking its own cash reserves going out into the open market and buying shares, just like you would as an investor. And when a company buys those shares, it has the effect of kind of removing those shares from circulation, kind of retiring those shares, uh, if that's how you want to look at it. So if there are 100 shares outstanding in a company, and a business goes out and buys 10 of them in the open market, there are now only 90 shares left outstanding and each individual remaining share represents a bigger kind of ownership percentage of that company. And that means that even if the business continues to earn a constant amount of money in terms of total dollars, the total earnings, uh, the per share earnings will go up because there are less shares outstanding and it will tend to lead to higher share prices over time. Warren Buffett is a huge fan of share repurchases in his portfolio companies and he's described share buybacks in the past as kind of like buying out one of your partners. If you were in some sort of private business arrangement where you had four or five different partners and one of them wanted to get out, a share repurchase is basically like you going and buying out that fourth or fifth partner who wants to leave, uh, using some cash to do that so that that partner can sell up and get their cash out and go to other things and you as one of the remaining partners now own a bigger chunk of the company. And although many investors and particularly many CEOs will get caught up in growth in absolute terms and trying to grow the total revenue and total earnings for a company, in terms of the results for an investor, it really is the per share growth that will truly matter at the end of the day. So why do I think that it's useful to think about share buybacks or share repurchases as if they were an acquisition? Well, basically, if you are an owner of a profitable business uh, that trades in the stock market, at the end of each year, that company has to make a decision around what they do with their earnings. Firstly, they could pay it as a dividend. 
Of course, they can do share repurchases as we will get into this video, or they can try and use it for growth, whether that is investing internally in some way in the business, or whether that is going out and actually making a acquisition of another business. Now let's assume just for argument's sake that this particular company has pretty limited options in terms of investing uh, internally in the business for organic growth, and they really have to kind of weigh up a dividend, a buyback, or going out and making an acquisition of a similar type of business. Now, although the idea of going out and making an acquisition of a new company can really get the juices flowing for a lot of managers, and it can sound like a really exciting prospect, we have to remember that at the end of the day, what will truly matter for individual shareholders is the per share earnings. That is what will drive the best results for shareholders. So when you look at it through that lens, the decision to either acquire a business or do a share buyback should become really simple. Assuming that an acquisition that you're looking at is similar in terms of business quality to your current operations, it really comes down to price and execution. Now, when a management team goes and buys a private company in a you know, privately negotiated transaction, generally you're going to have to pay a reasonably rational price to buy that business. The seller, unless they're in some sort of distressed situation, is not going to uh, sell you their business at a really low ball price. You're generally gonna to have to pay you know, a reasonable price for the company. Whereas if you look at your stock as it trades in the stock market, uh, we know that stock markets are exceptionally volatile and you can often get the opportunity to buy your own stock at much lower valuations than you might be able to buy a private business. Now let's use our same low to no growth business as an example. Uh, it might be a pretty realistic scenario to be able to either go out and buy a private business and do an acquisition and call it 15 times earnings versus uh, the alternative, which is maybe buying your own stock at a multiple of, let's say, 10 times earnings. Now, quantitatively, the 10 times earnings uh, acquisition is clearly a better option. And there's also a couple of other benefits to doing the share repurchase at 10 times earnings versus making an acquisition at 15 times earnings. Firstly, there is absolutely zero execution risk. When you purchase a new business, obviously, um, you know that may come with existing management, potentially you're putting new management in place. There's risks related to that. And there's countless examples of big acquisitions companies have made which promised phenomenal results in the future that really never materialized. So you definitely get that risk mitigation and uh, you, you kind of completely get rid of the execution risk doing a share repurchase over an acquisition. And it also gives management teams the opportunity to potentially deploy a lot of capital. There are only so many private businesses that you can go and acquire in a lot of cases. In some cases, maybe there's lots of opportunity, but if you're a big US company, there's not gonna be a lot of uh, you know acquisition opportunities for, say, McDonald's to move the needle by going out and buying a new brand. They are going to be able to deploy a lot more capital doing share repurchases uh, instead. So that is why I tend to view share repurchases more as an acquisition rather than like a dividend or a payment or a return of capital to shareholders as a lot of people tend to view them. They are something that will genuinely increase the per share earnings for remaining shareholders and uh, they have a couple of unique benefits. You can potentially buy uh, stock and make an acquisition at much cheaper prices than you could in a privately negotiated transaction. You completely get rid of execution risk. And of course you can deploy a lot more capital potentially than you could do by making acquisitions of new businesses. Now just to give you a real life example of how effective these share repurchases can be in these low to no growth businesses trading at reasonable prices, let's look at Union Pacific Railroad. Now this is I believe the second largest railroad in North America, uh, second to Birch Hathaway's Burlington Northern Santa Fe, and it actually used to be in the portfolio of Bill Ackman as well. And they are a classic example of a business that has had a little tiny bit of organic growth. There's been very little kind of total, total revenue growth of slightly improved margins over time, but the general kind of overall growth of the business has been very, very low. But Union Pacific, recognizing that their stock was trading at a reasonable valuation for a very long time, basically funneled uh, essentially 100% of their earnings towards share repurchases for a very long period. 
Now, if we jump over to Simply Wall Street to have a look into some of that data, you can see exactly what I'm talking about now. Simply Wall Street is a tool that I use to visualize a lot of the financial data for public companies. Uh, it's free to use forever, but if you want a 14 day free trial and a 30% discount, there's a link in the description if you want to check that out. And if we look at the past few years plus the next couple of years projections, we can see that revenue and earnings and free cash flow have been basically flat, a little bit of growth for Union Pacific. But if we scroll down and have a look at their per share performance, the performance is pretty spectacular. They've gone from uh, earning about $7 or so per share in 2020 up to you know being expected to earn about double that in 2024 pushing those per share earnings up to about $14 per share. And the way they've achieved that is largely through share repurchases. As we saw, the kind of total growth for the company is next to nothing, but a lot of cash has been funneled towards retiring shares. Another company that I mentioned earlier in the video was McDonald's. So uh, if we go into Simply Wall Street here and compare McDonald's with Union Pacific, we see a lot of the same trends where revenue, earnings and free cash flow have been pretty flat over the past couple of years for McDonald's. It's forecast to be the same again in the future. But if we scroll down and look at the per share performance, uh, there is kind of constant improvement from again, there have been less shares outstanding over time because uh, McDonald's, rather than making acquisitions for absolute growth at the overall kind of company level, they're kind of acquiring themselves and uh, producing really solid per share growth and earnings. So there you have some of my thoughts on share repurchases and why I maybe think about them a little differently than the average investor. I think there are very few things in business that destroy value uh, more quickly than making a, an overpriced, underperforming acquisition. And uh, share repurchases often give companies the chance to do the exact opposite of those things uh, at scale. You can potentially buy your own stock a lot cheaper than you can make acquisitions in new businesses. There's no execution risk. You're kind of just continuing to run the same business, but the per share performance is ever increasing. And you can tend to do it with a lot of scale and you can deploy a lot of cash through things like share buybacks where you would struggle to oftentimes deploy as much cash in acquiring new businesses. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please hit like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Let me know your thoughts on this kind of point of view down in the comment section below i would definitely be interested to hear that but that's it for me for this one and i'll see you on the next video cheers